What's up everyone? I'm so glad everyone can tune into the show. My name is Shams Makia and I am a 3D artist and motion designer. Um, I wish we could all be together right now in SIGGRAPH, NAB, or any of the motion um, tours that Maxon hosts, but I'm so glad that we could all be here and stay connected. Um, I guess I'll start a little bit of my timeline and then go into a little bit of a workflow. So I started out as a digital design and web development and that didn't really resonate with me. So I was introduced into trap code and I loved it and but it wasn't really enough. So I decided to look deeper into 3D and started um, with Cinema 4D, just like everyone else. I watched all the tutorials um, with Nick and EJ and, you know, and Chris and everyone that is just like, you know, everyone that starts out with. And yeah, like I think uh, five months later, I started getting clients and slowly within a year, I transitioned fully into, um, you know, motion design. And um, yeah, I'm, I've really loved it. And four years later, Maxon called me up to do SIGGRAPH. And um, right after that, um, I like a couple days after that, I decided to do daily renders. And yeah, that's been like the biggest challenge ever. And it's been a year since um, my first everyday render. And yeah, so here is one year of everyday renders. interested in joining my live on Twitch uh, Tuesdays and Fridays come through let's chat and if you have any questions I'm happy to help so yeah um, I basically all of my dailies act as my uh, kind of my own mood board for my own clients so when a client approaches me I have an array of um, pieces that I can pull from and you know kind of just show them so they wouldn't have to source anything outside and even if we did you know it wouldn't be that many pieces that we would source outside it would all be mainly mine and the cool thing is is that I get to uh, then work on on a lot of projects that I enjoy um, and I know how to do you know versus um, a client coming into me and asking me to do something super difficult super technical that I don't really do so yeah, so what we're gonna go into today um, are these pieces right here. Um, first piece is gonna be this nature piece. Um, and I created this just in the, um, I just wanted a lonesome tree type of thing. Um, and uh, I seen some, a lot of like real life, um, you know, uh, a tree with some, uh, swing on it and I love that visual so I was like okay you know what I want to translate that to something that I like and something that I would do um, so yeah so after that one I um, will get into some splines and snakes and how I do all of these um, snake pieces that I um, you know get asked about a lot so yeah, and then the last um, thing we will get into uh, in here is um, some uh, marvelous designer assets and how to integrate things into our content browser that you will see me um, reference a lot in here. I use the count content browser a lot. So um, yeah. So um, I usually start with whatever type of element that I'm trying to work with. So. In this one, um, I envisioned like an island. Later on, I added another one, but like initially I just started with one island. And I'm gonna uh, maybe change the seed. Um, 
something like that. Um, and I usually take out these furrows. If I ever need any more detail, I usually um, uh, just get into Quixel Bridge and, you know, just go crazy with any textures that I need, um, you know, so yeah. Um, but for this one, I'm just going to keep it the way it is because it's going to be covered in grass anyways. So after that, I'm just going to drop a plane and that's going to be my water. Um, and we're just going to go like this. And all I did for the water texture is I searched up water and it comes with Cinema 4D. And I basically just converted this into, um, you know, into something that is octane can read so um you know that is the same one i just you know and it, I, I believe it only has like some sort of um it has um noise that's animated so it's pretty good for animated scenes so um yeah so in here we can't really see that much so i'm gonna just turn on my hdri here um and I'm, i believe these are from 3d sky or cg axis um so yeah, so after that, I'm gonna just start playing with the placement of my... Okay, maybe we should go back to the first one right here. Something like that. And you still can't really see that much, so we'll turn off some Octane Daylight and it gives us a little bit of a better look. Um, and after that, I think um, starting with uh, laying out where... Um, my um, tree is gonna be so um, all I'm gonna do is grab um, a forester tree and right now this is a humongous um, I believe the one that I used was um, a I want to say it was an olive tree um, let's look for the olive tree olive tree olive tree I really like those um, those swirlies that it has, and all the way into the um, trunk. Or let's go to the parameters and make the size much less, much much less, much less, something like that. And let's get the levels evened out. Otherwise, you know we won't have any. Um, let's make them six. Otherwise, we won't have any um, leaves. Um, that might be the look that you are going for, which is cool. And I love Forster for the quickness of it because I am a daily artist. Um, I do require that I have something that is um, quick and easy to assemble um, and make my own. And I love the, the parameters for, um, for this uh, plugin that it's it's highly customizable so all i did is i i believe i had um bent the trunk um and we go to bend and i'm pretty sure added more twist and right now and that looks a bit odd for the time being um let's go um it's really all trial and error, so um, what I might come up with, you know, might not be, you know, something that you like. So let's say this is the look that we were going for, you know, that's cool. Let's start layering some bushes on this island, you know. It doesn't really look all that great right now, but we will um, make it look better with all the textures. So um, for that, I'm going to go back to plugins for Forester and go to Multiflora. And I'm going to accumulate a couple of bushes that, you know, I like. For this, let's go with the long grass and let's duplicate that and go with some, uh, some poa grass. And what else should we, should we add? Um, Let's add some long grass. I don't know if that, that uh, we already had long grass, wild grass. Wild grass seems cool. Um, and yeah, let's let's drop these into a scatter object. Up 
octane scatter and we'll drop these right here and yeah let's um let's drag and drop this over here and it looks very weird right now um let's move this over a little bit um, it looks pretty weird right now because the sizing is very awkward um, and now that looks better let's make the poa a little bit bigger um, and um, I tend to usually like to go to my scale just to add a little bit of um, uh, a little bit of differences like patches and stuff like that the best way to do that or the quickest way to do that is just get a good old noise from cinema and already you could see um, it's so much better um, but right now it's set to vertex let's set it to surface and um, I feel like we will have a lot more success um, with that you could have a lot of other bushes um, poking through um, like this let's grab that let me delete all this and for the POA um, let me have a different global scale and let's make the POA bigger um, it doesn't really look all that good <laughs> to be honest but it gives us a little bit of variety um, and yeah it could switch up the the look. Um, I added a little bit of a rock texture here from Quixel um, and we could grab it right here. Like I said, I'm always uh, referencing my um, um, my content browser because it just it helps me build things really quickly. So after I've done this, um, maybe we should start focusing on the textures of everything. So for the leaf, um, all I did is, first of all, let's convert these into um, materials that, um, first of all, actually let's duplicate this and instead of that, let's, let's grab some flowers. I feel like some flowers would be nice in here. Um, and let's go back in here and maybe set it to 50 and make the flowers a lot smaller. So it's like kind of like weeds and stuff. So again, it's it's all up to you how you um, how you kind of navigate around your seam and and make it really truly your own. Um, I usually play around until I find something that I really like. Um, so that that seems pretty cool. But we're gonna um, my color palette is usually pink, pinkish, bluish um, stuff, and I'm basically playing off the sky and trying to mirror that in the nature so um let's go with oops uh, i didn't mean to do that um let's go with um with materials convert materials and now all of the materials that we have that we um we're going to remove unused materials so we still have um all of our materials here so with this, we're just gonna go up to my node editor and quickly we are gonna add a color correction. And with that color correction, I'm just gonna go with maybe like a pink, pinkish color. And um, let's go a little bit more bold, pink. Um, and I like that. Why isn't it not working? Uh, good question. Let's hide it and unhide it. Sometimes octane can be like this, but you know, it's not a big deal um, right there. So I'm gonna add transmission, you know, to this. Um, and it just gives it. So we're gonna copy this um, and apply it to all the green ones um, or a couple of the green ones. again you don't have to take all this time to do all of this um, you know um, there we go that's pretty cool let's open up this again copy 
And let's go to this. Paste. Paste. Um, and then pipe it into the texture and into the diffuse. Um, and already. It's way too much. the prettiest pink but it works for now um, we can adjust that always later and um, make it you know look, um, look a lot more um, better so yeah so now that we have that it looks very you know very simple very straightforward um, what I'm gonna do is I am gonna um, add another landscape. And all we have to do actually, we could just um, add, oops, add all of these into uh, Alt G, and we're gonna add those and make it. Um, and then we're gonna duplicate it. No, and we're gonna grab this, pull it over, and voila, we have another one um, straight up, right? Um, and in that case, we could go up to our landscape and switch up the switch up the vibe a little bit, make this a little bit bigger, um, and up, maybe up like that. Probably better to increase more of this and maybe more of this. So um, you know, we have a bit of a bit more, and perhaps make this a little bit bigger as well. Cool. Um, so once you're happy with that, you know it's it's not really that difficult. Um, you could switch up the water if you want and make it some sort of water that you like or a little bit more noise if you'd like but all i did is um i have um some models that i brought in from some of these are free some of these i just made on my own um so i brought this bridge um model that um if i could find it here it is um and i just added that and immediately it just added some sort of um kind of like something to guide your eyes to towards and yeah um, and in this case I want to hop back into my first island and bring it closer bring it bring this a little closer um, and, and make it further up just so it's touching and bigger maybe down Oh, come on. Okay, what we're gonna do is just gonna bring this down a bit. Okay, that looks good. And I'm gonna just bring my water up a little bit. So, it's submerged. Um, like I said, it's not a carbon copy of my other one. Um, but, you know. And we'll take this down a little bit. Oops, that's two down. Um, let's fix this. You know. Okay, so after that, I, I basically added a swing. Um, if I can find the swing as well. Um, and I'll talk about how I typically, you know, uh, set this up. Um, you know, and then I just added a, this and. Uh, that's basically it. All I did later on in Photoshop is I added this um, moon and some uh, birds, all of which I got from free stocks and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, um, 
basically, you know, everything was super simple to make. Um, let me show you um, how it would look like with the normal scene. Obviously, it's not textured because I, I deleted everything. But this is your clay. This is how it would look like. I spent a little bit more time um, working on the shrubs and bushes and all of that stuff and making sure everything is cohesive and it looked nice. Um, so yeah. So um, yeah. So moving on guys to the spline snake look. Um, I basically use this everywhere as you can see for animations and um, you know stills and I, yeah I, I use them a lot in my everyday renders. Um, so it's just a fun way um, to, to add more you know a bold statement piece into your renders um, and you can animate them later and you know do all that fun stuff. So let's take a look at the file right now that I have on. So as you can see, there is a snake and it's just within a spline wrap and I'll, I'll talk about that in a little bit and then the spline itself. Um, and then I have flowers and all of that stuff. So let's hide the snake. First of all, what I usually like to do is look at my piece and see where I'm gonna add everything. I'm gonna turn off all of this and just stick with the bowl and make sure that um, my scene is is fitting to the bowl and like the snake is fitting around that. So the first thing that I'll do, um, I will go into uh, Pinterest and I'll look up some snake art and, and you know, sometimes these just come up on my feed um, and I'll just choose, you know, choose one that I enjoy and you know, like there's just so many, so many. So I'll usually bring that into Illustrator. As you can see, I chose this one right here and you can fix up the spline after you trace it and um, you save it as an Illustrator 8 file. Um, that's the only way that you could um, bring it into Cinema and it working. Um, so yeah, so the first thing that you're gonna do is, um, so you're gonna make this a little bit bigger. I think this is a good size. Um, maybe a, even a little smaller, something like that. Um, and that, you know, that is basically the shape that we're looking for. Let's look at that. Um, it looks like it's it's coming a little bit up. So that's what we're gonna do. Bring it just a little bit up. I feel like that's, that's around the same shape. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, um, first of all, uh, let's look at how this is gonna work. So the first things first is we're gonna bring it a little bit forward. We're gonna select point mode. And um, I remember as the snake, um, the head is a little bit in front. So we're gonna, we're gonna grab these two points and bring them up front and grab these two points and, and push them back a little bit. Oops, um, make sure you're pressing shift and selecting. Um, and then pushing back, same thing with these. I want them in front, and then we're gonna push them in front. Um, and already we have like a three-dimensional um, type of snake look that's going on. Um, so after we have done that, um, all we're gonna do is we are gonna bring a, a spine wrap. Um, Let's bring that same one here, and all you're gonna do is just, yeah, it's, um, where is it? Spline wrap, right here. Um, and then you're gonna make it a child of um, the snake. Um, so I have my Python here. Um, it's already textured. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about my uh, content browser in the next segment. Um, but I basically, anything that I texture on my own, so I don't have to do this over and over again. I just do that. So I'm gonna child this right here. Um, and right away, you know, we have a pretty good looking um, snake. What I usually do is, um, in the spline wrap, I would set it to minus Z because otherwise it just comes default like this. Um, so just set it to minus Z. And um, I would um, typically, what I would do also is I would change it from keep length to fit spline. 
um, just so it would fit the spline perfectly. Because it's a snake, it's no problem if it stretches a little bit here and there. So all you're gonna have to do is really just um, keep tweaking how you want it to, to look. Um, so, you know, if you want the spline to look a little bit different, you know, you could do that. We're not actually using that, that one spline that I, that I already made today, but you know, it's very quite similar. All you need to do is, you know, for the sake of time, I can't really, um, go into all the tweaks. Um, but for something like this, like this is, um, a little bit rotated, so I will, um, rotate this back. Um, and all I'll do is um, I'll go back down here and select point mode um, and make sure maybe like the tip is wrapping around or something um, like going into this bone um, or going down. Um, you know, there's there's just so many options that you could that you could do something like that. Um, and as you can see, there's a little bit of um, jagged edges. Um, and again, that's entirely up to you if you want to fix that. I usually just drop it into a uh, subdivision surface um, to make everything look, you know, better. This actually did not make it look good, but you get the idea. Um, the one thing that I would also recommend um, with this method is that you basically just keep trying and keep tweaking everything. And I just basically added some accent stuff after that. Um, yeah, it's just really trial and error with this one and just making sure everything fits within the piece that you are making. Um, but yeah, that's, you know, that's basically it for this one. Um, let's move on to the next piece. So for this one, um, I decided to show you guys how I work with the content browser. And early on this year, I got a marvelous, um, or I made a marvelous designer collection. Um, and it's got 10 pieces of clothes, dynamic, all animated and exported. You have a, um, a Cinema 4D file and um, what else? You have an Alembic file. You have a walk cycle. So there's a, a lot to work with in those and they're all free uh, on my website under um, uh, open source. Um, Matthias will link that in the chat. Um, I'd be really grateful for that. Um, but yeah, so um, for you to integrate that into your um, content browser. So if you had a scene that requires a, a walking person or something like that, you could just drag and drop it into your scene um, without any headaches and you could just texture it or you could texture it first and then drag and drop it into your scene and then it's all ready to go. So let's take a look at the um, video first of the, of the collection that I made. segment um, we're gonna be looking at the files that you will get once you get that once you download it and it's basically you know all of these um, and then you get the male and female walk cycles in case the ones that are in there don't work so let's open up this uh, one of the files and then you'll get a c4d file the animation of the one the female or the male um, and then you have the MD file in case you want to use it um, in this case, we're not going to look at that. So you're just going to open up your Cinema 4D um, uh, file um, and it should open up very shortly. But yeah, you get you get all these 10 assets and um, you get to basically manipulate them in any way you want. Um, and you also get the marvelous files, which you will also be able to, um, you know, um, play with um, inside of Marvelous if needed. So um, right now, as you can see, it starts out in a T-pose and then you could start, um, you know, moving it in. So 
um, Alt G to group it and right now, you know, it's not textured the garment or anything like that, but you can texture it. Um, you know, there's, um, it's pretty easy to do that, whatever you like to texture it, you know. So um, after that, after you group that, let's say shorts, walk, whatever kind of name, I'm going to go up to my um, uh, content browser here and I'm going to select, uh, or not select actually, uh, let's just, um, do I have something here? No, I don't. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new uh, preset library and I'm going to name this uh, MD S Makia, you know, you can name it whatever you want. Um, and then it opens up this for you. Um, what you could do is literally just drag, I'm going to press shift and drop it in. And it will create a file in here. Um, it will show a preview later on, um, just because right now it's sourcing it. It doesn't really show the preview right away. Um, but you know, these are very, very helpful to have. There's capes, there's all types of um, stuff that you might find um, helpful to your uh, scene. But when this comes really in handy is if you have a new file, let's say you have a runway theme or a forest theme or whatever, you know what I mean? Like, let's just make up, make up a scene and let's pretend that this is a scene that you are working on. Um, we could drop in some water real quick. Um, water um, real quick. Where is it? Some octane water. And let's drop in uh, a sky. And let's see how that looks like. You know, it doesn't really look anything special. Um, let's rotate that real quick. Um, I'm sure you guys know how to how to work this. It's not really a big deal. Let's say this is your scene for some reason. You know, you are into this this type of scene. And um, let's drop this here. It's already it's already. Um, you can't really see it that much, but. Um, if we go back to our, um, or let's just look up MD, um, and then it will come MD S Makia, and all you do have to do is double click it, and your model will appear in your scene, and you get to just place it in any scene that you want, um, and if you had textured the, the, the clothes a certain way that you want it to look like that and stuff, um, you could also do that. You could uh, you could um, animate the model uh, forward and backward, so it's not just in place. So it actually walks forward. Um, but yeah, like uh, there's just you know this is just so handy in so many ways, and you know you could you could use this in so many ways, and it's free. So download it if you dig this, and you know give me a shout. Come through to the Twitch channel. And yeah, so um, let's go back to full screen now. So thank you everyone for tuning in and I appreciate everyone for coming through. Um, if you have any more questions, stick around. And um, if you have more questions in the future, come through to my Twitch channel. Like I said, on Tuesdays and Fridays, I stream all Cinema 4D stuff on my Twitch channel, Esmakia, and also you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Esmakia. Um, remember, if you wanna get all the freebies that will be coming up with, um, there will be another Marvelous Collection soon as well. So any freebies that you guys are thinking of picking up is will be all on the open source on my website. Thank you for uh, stopping by and peace out.